thank you for joining us tonight on our Do What You Like Fitness Conversation Series, where we are having conversations with people, inspiring awesome people who are helping others be their very best one step at a time. And tonight we have Shanta with us, who is a mindset coach, a personal trainer here in New York City, a fitness competitor, and an entrepreneur with her new company called Boom Boom New York City, which she started during the pandemic. So welcome. Thank you, Thank for you so much. Us. For having me. Yay. So um, I first met you back in the day at Tribeca Fitness. Yes. And I remember seeing you almost every single day when I went in to At do like 6 a.m. Yes, 6 a.m. <laughs> and I always really admired how, what an amazing, attentive um, trainer you were with all the people that you were working with. And I could tell right away, just from your energy, um, how much you cared about the clients that you were working with. Yeah. And of course. And then there were days I would be there and you would be doing your, you know, your own workout. And I just thought, wow, she's, she's amazing. I've, I've got to meet her. Oh, that's so <laughs> nice. Like, and I feel like we really never got a chance to chat because I mean, you were working, you know, and yeah. I was there to work to do my workout. You were working with clients and then during the pandemic, we connected through Instagram. At the park. Yeah, in, yeah, the, in the park. And, yeah, through Instagram and then in, in the park. And here we are. So, you know, I thought the same thing about you because and you were this, you know, familiar face I saw every morning. And I'm, if I see you, I'm going to say hi. So we just kept nodding hi here and there. But I always thought to myself, was like, wow, she's very consistent. <laughs> like, you were there every day at the same time I was working. So it was inspiring for, for me to do my own workouts, knowing that like, okay, I just train my clients, but I, I also see this woman that comes in every single day. She goes in, she does a work and she leaves. So I kind of felt like, okay, I know I'm tired, but I can just get my workout in and then go home. So it was really nice to see that. And then like during the pandemic, it was just like, oh my gosh, I have no gym community. I have no familiar faces. And it was just me and my clients virtually. And then once it was warmer out, like I was able to get outside and then I would see like a familiar face walking down the road. And that was kind of nice to see. So it was, I felt the same way when I, you know, noticed you at the gym. And so can you tell us um, about your journey into fitness, you know, and, and what you were doing before you got so involved, before you became a trainer? Um, I think your story is really inspiring and would be an inspiration to a lot of people. Oh, uh, thank you. So long story short, I guess it started in 2014. Well, actually 2012, I, I broke up with an ex that cheated on me. So I had to make a decision. I was like, all right, stay with this person who didn't treat me well or go this way and have no idea what's going to happen, but be by myself. And I chose to go by myself because it was painful to know that the person I love could hurt me. And I didn't want to live in that situation. So I got myself out of it. And I started, I was in fashion at this time as a designer. And my girlfriend, she was like, do you want to go to the gym? I'm like, yes. Like I'm sad all the time. So let me go to gym and get better um, and work on my best self. Right. And I kept going, my body kept changing because I was changing my diet and working out. But at the same time, my mind would not let go of this stupid guy. I was just like, oh, I miss him and blah, blah, blah. So then um, my girlfriend decided to do a bodybuilding show. And I was like, can I just come with you every day to the gym? Because I was crying at home. So I was like, I'd rather go to the gym. And I saw her dedication and discipline for two months. She did a show. She won, I think she got third place. And I said, I'm going to do that. And I guess I really wanted self-empowerment. So I thought bodybuilding was the answer. And I was like, I'm going to find a coach. I'm going to win a show. And then I found my coach and he was like, well, you've never done anything this extreme. So we need to take our time. And I said, you know what? I'm going to work on myself. And I told him I wanted three things. I wanted to win. I wanted to look good naked. And I wanted self-empowerment. Those were my three goals at the time. And long story short, nine months later, I do my show. I won four trophies. And that was the first time in my life I was like, I chose myself. I said, I'm going to do this. And I surpassed my goal. 
And so once I won that, I got nationally qualified, went to Miami, competed. I got 16th place, but I never felt so empowered by what I did for myself. So then I was like, I want to get back to New York. I'm going to quit my job and become a trainer. Everybody should feel this great about themselves. And I literally quit my job, at, which I was working for five years as a design assistant. And I said, I'm going to be a trainer. And then my friend, she was a manager at the time at Crunch, um, but she got moved to Tribeca location. And I was at the 38th street. So I said, I need to take myself out of this environment because my ex was still at that gym. So then I just started brand new at Tribeca. I was like, this is going to be my career. I need a new change. And at the time I actually dyed my hair completely red, like fire red. Cause I said, I'm going to live my life with passion. So that's the whole Sean's boom, boom. My friends call me Sean's and boom, boom is like the sound of a heartbeat. You have to live your life with passion. And so I dedicated everything I did towards loving myself and um, bodybuilding gave me that self-belief, self-confidence. And I said, I was just doing one show and, and it was great. And then it got addictive. I did it every year for about seven shows. <laughs> but oh. it really opened up my possibility to do anything I want in life. Like I could say, I'm going to do this. And I, I did it, you know, just like that mental strength. I had it because I said I was going to compete and do a show and do well. And I did. So that gave me the confidence to do anything. And then once I got to the gym in Tribeca, I just said, this will be my career. And I made it happen. And anything I set my goals and like a visualize, it came to life. So that's how it all started. And, you know, I worked for Crunch for three years and I've been independent now for three years. And I mean, I'm doing something right because I had like 25 clients follow me from my corporate gym to independent. And I, I want to say I probably still have 15 of them and I've been with them for almost six years. So I feel like I'm more than just a trainer. Obviously, like I care about people and they have been with me for so long. They believe in what I offer and vice versa. So the relationship's really strong and, and they're both in, and they're getting stronger and healthier at the same time. So um, that's why I love what I do is because I did that for myself through fitness. And I always say bodybuilding helped me, but fitness saved my life in that way. And I always preach it to anybody and everybody, like you have to love yourself 110%. Like that's the most important relationship you should have. And so that's how I carry it to my training. It's like all about the mindset. Everything you look for outside answers to, to being happy, to lose weight, all those things come from within. So that's always why I say everything within. And that kind of leads on to the clothing brand that I started in the pandemic because I was like, I need to make money like on the side, right? I was like, why not start a fashion line? Because I haven't been in fashion in so long. So Boom Boom was like, you know, live your life with passion. And they were just sweatpants, but I wanted them to be more stylish where people put them on and was like comfortable with themselves because you have to be authentic in that way so that's kind of how that all came together and so and that's what I I did for the pandemic and I feel really proud that I did that because I was able to put myself out there and people responded well to it um, and then I just love creating so sometimes I'll paint um, words of affirmations or hearts just to kind of remind people like love yourself like it's so important so that's my story <laughs> I love it. Okay. Go ahead, Troy. You got something? No, no. I was just saying, you know, I love it. All that positivity, you know, it's true Thank with you the so fitness. Much. Yeah, with the fitness. I feel the same way. You yeah, know? fitness. I have to really remind important. myself. <laughs> yeah. And then, too, for over the years, I have to remind myself why fitness is so important. Like, it literally saved me from being depressed about, you know, these things happen all the time, right? But people get in relationships, people would betray you or like you lose a job, whatever it is in life, you're going to be tested. And then you have a choice. You either move forward or you stay there. And I was just like, I don't like this feeling being sad all the time, you know? And I was like, all right, I'm going to work on myself. And it started from mental work. Um, and then fitness was just pushing myself. And uh, yeah, I, 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 I try to tell people that all the time. It's like, we have one life. Why not live it to the fullest? Right. To be our best self. And yes. when you look good, you feel good. Right. Yeah. And, and when you start to feel really amazing, you don't want to go back the other way. Yeah. The only thing you see is forward. 
you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, so can you tell us a little bit about, so do you have like a ritual or anything that you do in the morning when you get up, do you journal? Is there anything specific that, that you have to do every single morning that kind of gets you in your um, positive space uh, to start? Yeah. With? Um, so I usually like to make my bed, but the rule is whoever wakes up last makes the bed. So my husband's always the last one to wake up. So I don't do that that much, <laughs> but my first nice thing, I, that's yeah, good. Right? I'm always <laughs> up early. So I'm like, he's still sleeping, but, um, I do like to drink a cup of water first thing in the morning. Uh, it can always be lemon water. I like sea moss water as well. Like I just put sea moss in it. It helps yeah. with Oh my gosh, just everything. I feel so good. And then like green juice, it's sometimes it's one, sometimes it's both, sometimes all three at once. Like I just drink it all. So I do that. And then I do journal. Um, I like one of my friend, I've always journaled for like the past 15 years, but one of my friend has a journal called pop journal. It kind of breaks it down to certain like simple things, but I just start with three things, gratitude, like first thing in the morning. And it could be for my husband. It could be for my clients from yesterday. And it could just be my warm bed. It could be something as simple as that, but I really do appreciate it every time I write it down. Um, And then I write down my intention for the day. Like if I have a lot of clients, I'm just going to focus on training them, you know, make sure I get my training in. Um, I always try to take care of myself in that way. So I'm making time for myself and my schedule. Um, But that's pretty much it. I feel like I don't get the chance to work out until later in the day because I take early clients. So if I can take five minutes to be grateful, and then my mornings, my, my day is fine. Like, I really feel that way. Um, and then it, even better, if I can train in the morning, I feel 100% better. But um, I do take clients at 6, 7, 8 a.m. Um, so they come first in that sense. But I mean, that's as simple as it gets. Yeah, I can do sometimes like a yoga flow, like five minutes just to stretch if I have the time, if I don't have a client in the morning. But first thing is just drinking a cup of water. Like, I don't know how that the lemon water just energizes me, makes me feel a little boost of energy. And then I'm just like, okay, I'm grateful for this. And and it's very simple, but I've been doing it for years. I feel like it gets everything, all the internal juices, right? The organs, it wakes everything up when you drink Mm -hmm. that water first thing, you know, before you put anything else in your body, and especially with the lemon and it gets in there and it's like, okay, it gets the digestive system going. So you can, you know, clean out your digestive system. Yes. Yeah. So I'm, I'm all about that. And when you said, make your bed, that's one of the first things I do too. I feel like when yeah. I make my bed, I've accomplished something. Yes. Yeah. No, so this is the first thing. With- yeah. Cause it's like yeah. literally the first thing. So my husband gets up at the same time as I do. So I'm usually the one that makes the bed, but <laughs> I might make it once or twice a week. Um, if he gets up early for a photo shoot or something like that, cause he's a photographer. Um, but most times he works really late and sleeps in a little yeah. bit and I'll be up early, but we do take turns in that sense, but he always does it. Yeah. So no, that's good. It's funny about something so simple as making mm-hmm. your bed. It just feels like, okay, now I can start my day. <laughs> yeah. It's it really just, does. You know, it's, it, it's it sets the tone. Simple. Yeah. Yeah. Already. All right. One thing accomplished. Yes. Um, so can you tell us what you're doing right now on, um, I know you were doing something um, like each day on, on Instagram, oh, yeah. the, the mind body so, thing. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Cause my one-on-one clients, I feel very successful in that. Right. They're virtual. And so my goal this year is to really work on an online business in a sense of having people see me as a coach online and then hire me as their coach. It just seems like the audience are, it's different from social media and then in person. I have clients that are 40 up to 80 in person, but my Instagram following could be like people my age, right? Thirties, thirties to up to forties. And it just seems like they, they're not gripping onto me as a coach online. Maybe I need to work on other things. So I'm working on that right now, but I figure like this would be free um, so they can join if they want, but it really is just the whole month of July, every week is something different. And I wanted to focus on mind, body, and soul practice, right? So like, for example, this week, the first one is mindset. So there's a sentence, like an affirmation that you feel in each day, you want to focus on that. So like, um, it's, I embrace today, I embrace blank and you feel that in, and it could just be today. I embrace, you know, 
my silliness or whatever it is. Like you just uh-huh. focus on that. Like that's the mindset. And then the body would be any kind of movement. So this week's movement is one minute of work of something you do not enjoy. So it could be like a one minute plank, a one minute uh, sprint, mm-hmm. anything that's uncomfortable for you so you can get better at it, you know? So that's kind of like the growth that I want you to get with your body. And the third one is soul. And that can sometimes be nutrition or in this case, it's drink a lemon a glass of lemon water in the morning and take five minutes to either meditate, journal, or just breathe for five minutes. So they're very simple. And I just asked my followers to tag me and it could just be like, okay, I'm drinking my green juice. Here's a photo of it. And my intention today is blah, blah, blah. And then wellness challenge for uh, July. So the, and the most, like whoever mo- tags me the most for the month and I've been like keeping track, will get a prize at the end. And like, I think for people, sometimes prizes are like an incentive, but at the same time, no one loses because you just get better at these habits. You know what I mean? (laughs) Um, So that's something I just did. And I, I tried doing that throughout like the pandemic too. I was like, what can I offer that's like free that people would do? So even when it first started, I had no gym equipment. I had like wine bottles from our wedding that we don't drink. So I did exercises with the wine bottles and I was just showing people how you can use whatever you have at home to work out in. Um, So I was doing videos with that. Uh, You know, I was just trying to stay positive for people that were maybe depressed during the pandemic because I was fortunate enough to be healthy, to be working virtually. And I'm, uh, that's my duty is to, to help and and coach and be positive. So that's what I, I did. And that's how I tried to bring back the wellness uh, for July. It's just having people think about those basics again. I think that's a really cool idea. Thank you. Oh, and and I, that, I, that's for all your followers, not, not just your train trainees, your followers. Yeah. It could be anybody, um, my clients, followers, friends, and at the end, whoever has the most, I'm going to put, cause I'm sponsored by a couple brands like uh, sweaty Betty, uh, Frey skincare. Um, so I would put this basket together of like a mind, body and soul prize. So you would have, you know, skincare that are dedicated to women who sweat. And then Sweaty Betty is like a brand that's made from, you know, by women who are empower them. And, you know, maybe I'll throw in a virtual training or something like that. It'd be like a whole package where, look, you did like the most. So this is my gift to you just as a thank you for joining my challenge, you know? Um, So we'll see. Like some days are good. Some days people forget, but it's fine. I just feel like if one person does it, I'm like happy about that. (laughs) I'm going to have to jump in on it. Yeah, it's very simple. It's like every week it changes, but um, mind, body, and soul, and it's, you could really do all of them in, in the morning. You know, I think I did a couple, a few days. It's you like did. I do, and then I forget to like. I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't send, I didn't send her anything today. Yeah, but it's like it's I hard did, to I remember to send. Stop. It's just funny. I don't. I forgot. I was like, oh my god, I didn't take a picture of that. Yeah. No, I know you're very consistent with your (laughs) healthy habits. So I think for people, sometimes they forget to drink water. They forget to go outside. They forget to, you know what I mean? So if they say, okay, this is a challenge I want to do, like they would follow it, you know? So hopefully that just helps someone that is not as disciplined as, you know, someone like us who like to work out, who like to be outside. Maybe someone's like, I can't drink enough water. So your goal is to drink one liter a day. Well, I'm always curious about, you know, the whole bodybuilding lifestyle, right? So you said you did that and you you were in seven shows. So I'm not seven sure. Sh- I, I planned it on or- doing one. I said, I'm going to do one. I'm going to win. And that's it. It was, you know, what's so addicting. It's not even like having the abs because it's kind of miserable being that shredded all the time. Like you're eating a certain thing, you're working out. Like it's so, it literally was a second job for me. And at the time, my very first show, I didn't have money. So I worked really hard and my coach was so good. I was like, I'm going to find the money. I mean, I was doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Like I was working at a restaurant and working my nine to five. So I was baking cookies as I'm prepping. I'm baking cookies, bringing it to work at Red Lobster at my restaurant and I was selling them to my friends and I was selling three three cookies for five bucks and then people knew I was raising money for like a trainer and like buying protein all this stuff they would just throw me 20 sometimes and like with one month I made um six hundred dollars and that was just like the New York hustle mentality that I got when I moved here like you can make you can do anything you want 
And so that drove me to like work even harder. So that first year I, I spent nine months competing. And then when I won four trophies, I was like, what the heck? This is insane. And I was so calm. Like, I was like, okay, the day of the show is very calm and chill and everyone was freaking out. And I'm like, why am I so calm? My coach is like, cause you did everything you needed to do. There's nothing left, but to show it off. So I did. And then when I went to, to my, to nationals, which sometimes people take a long time to get to nationals, you have to get qualified. And these shows are massive. They're like 1500 people compete. And I got there and I was like, wow, I'm with all these amazing women. I might not win because I'm an amateur, but the experience was just so incredible. So then I took a year off. I, I put on some weight because it was my first time like coming off from a show and not knowing how to reverse diet it. And just like, I just ate everything. And then I put on 20 pounds right away. And then I really just was like, took a year to get it off. And then I was like, when do you show again? And then I did another show and it just happens like every other year. And then I realized, holy crap. 2019 was my last show. I did a show and a national show and that was like the seventh show. <laughs> so every show I do, I win first place. I get qualified for nationals and I never win. Um, and there's a documentary my husband did in 2019 um, where I won the first show. I went to national and I got 11th place. And uh, it really is all is a short documentary, 30 minutes long, but it shows what it takes to believe in yourself and dedicate and if you lose, it's not losing, it's a lesson, right? And I, I got 11th place and I stood there with like, great, I was like, I did my best. I, I know I lost, but I did my best. I was like standing there posing like, oh my God, I didn't place. You know, I'm thinking that to myself, but I kept my composure because when you present yourself, you can't show that you lost. You can't show that you're, you mad, you're mad. It's just like, you did your best and then you walk off and then you cry later. And that, that's what happened. <laughs> but I was really proud. I did my best, you know what I mean? Um, but it's, I want to say 1% of the world could probably handle bodybuilding. It is something very intense. I don't recommend it to anyone that has a bad relationship with food or with themselves. Um, I went into it sad, but also it, it was like a process of me building myself up and then once I got there, I was confident even with who I was as a person because I was I was I was authentic with who I was. But bodybuilding, it was like a second job. I cooked all my meals. I weighed all my food. I didn't eat outside the, the diet. I woke up six in the morning to do my cardio, train with my trainer, got ready for my nine to five job, went to 540, 5.30. I was done with my nine to five, went to my job at Red Lobster from 5.45 to one in the morning. And did wow. that almost for nine months. And I don't know how I did it, but I just, the drive to be a better person, I just did it. And so people are like, how did you, how do you do that with that? I'm like, if you want something bad enough, you make it happen. Like, I don't know how, but I did it. And it was just like crazy. Cause it was one year I, I worked two jobs and then the bodybuilding, which was like a third job, but I was single at the time. So it was just very like, this is my life. I want a better life. This is what I need to do. And so bodybuilding was very extreme. There's plenty of videos of me crying, like going through the workouts. Like it was actually physically painful, but with fitness, it pushes you to your mental capacity. You think you can't do it, but you can, you really can go with one more rep. You really can push yourself to the, the max. And that's what my coach did for me and forever grateful for him. He's like my best friend now, but the process was very intense and, and I can't even think about training like that anymore. Like that's exhausting. <laughs> now I just train to be healthy um, and strong and I, I kind of want to get into powerlifting. So that's what I'm kind of training for now. Um, so hopefully next year we do a meet where I, I, I am basing my strength on performance and not aesthetics. Um, but bodybuilding just started as wanting self-love and, and self-empowerment. And I think people saw it as like, oh, physically she looks great you know, immensely, I was, I was okay too. But I think sometimes the confusion is sometimes people see, oh, she looks great. But sometimes people are not as happy on the inside, just because they look good on the outside, physically in bodybuilding might not translate to their mental health as well. So that that's kind of like tricky as well. But I went into it knowing that I wanted to work on myself. And regardless if I win or not, I, I did my absolute best. So when I lost, I wasn't upset. 
I mean, upset. Yes, I didn't get placed, but at the same time, I did everything I needed to do and I don't regret not doing something, you know? So bodybuilding is very special to me in that way. And who knows, like maybe I'll compete when I'm in my, my forties, who knows, but the stage is always there. So right now for me, it's taking care of my clients, building my business and working on my strength. Are your clients just training for, let's say, weight loss, or are you training clients to bodybuild as well? You know what's interesting? Uh, most of them, they just want to train to, to feel better. Um, like my oldest client's 80. We've been training for about six years now, twice a week. He just wants to not be old. <laughs> he always says that. Yeah. And he moves better than some of my people, my younger people. So it's great. But I had one lady who um, was in her 50s. She had a midlife crisis, she says, and she wanted to do bodybuilding. I'm like, okay. So we, we got her ready for the bodybuilding show and she just wanted to do something for herself. And she placed, I believe, fifth. And she was happy with that because she did something out of her comfort zone. Um, so that was great. And, and people always think, oh, I'm too old to do anything. I'm like, you're not. If you just dedicate and be consistent you can do whatever you want like she literally was she's 55 now but she's done like two shows and it's like she 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 placed in the top five in her category but um she's very happy that she just even does the show and currently right now i do have a bodybuilder she's younger but she's doing a different category so she was bikini two years ago now she's going to wellness so in bodybuilding there's different categories like bikini wellness figure and physique so physique is the biggest that you'll ever see a woman um and then uh bikini is more like a bikini body so my client now she wants to do the in-between so it's like lean but muscular but not striations if that makes sense like you, you see the muscles and so we are 10 weeks out from her show and uh i'm, I'm excited because she's she wants it so bad so this is my first time really because she's at a competitive level. The other um, woman, she was just competing in her age group. So she she was like, I don't care to win. I just want to do it. You know, but this girl, she really wants to get her pro card. And basically, I don't have my pro card, even though I, I've won first place. I just haven't won nationals. And I'm okay with that. It's not my career where I get paid for it. But the pro card, if you do pro shows, then you like keep moving up and you can get paid for these shows. But it's very rare too. So my client now, she wants her pro card and it's exciting because it's me really being a coach, not competing, but can I get her there and can she be mentally ready and physical? Because I can't send her on stage knowing that she's not ready. Like I have to make that decision to say, you're not ready. We're going to do another show, you know, because my coach was like that to me. He would say, we're going to take this amount of time to prep and then we'll see where you're at there. And if I wasn't ready, he's like, okay, we're not ready. And I would like, I trust you because I don't want to go on stage not ready, you know? Right. So it's very rare that I have bodybuilders, but this is my second one. And I'm very excited when I do get one because I'm passionate about it. But the rest of my clients are everyday people who are very successful in their careers, but just not in their fitness, right? They don't put themselves first. Um, but now over the years, they start to see how fitness, nutrition, mindset, sleep, water, they're starting to put it together after so many years, but they're okay with that. They're like, I I'm not a gym rat. I just want to be healthy. Mm -hmm. So like it's, um, so I feel like I, I'm diverse to everybody. I could train everybody. I even have one person now, he's very overweight. He's about 300 pounds. He lost 10 pounds in the first five weeks, but we got him off his medication because the doctor is like, you're pre-diabetic, we need to put you on this. And that, like, I can't tell you how proud I was because he was like, my doctor said, I don't need to be on medication. They said, yeah, come back I in six it. months. So That's my goal great. is to like have him. So my husband did a, um, a video of him two weeks ago. This is his journey. So in another couple months, we're going to do another video. And so we're going to see it in a snippet of like how his mental like mindset shift as well as his body shrinking. But just to say, like, I don't have to be on medication. They wanted to be him to be on like seven medications. Wow. And then after training with me, and he only wow. trains with me once a week, he does his homework and 
he really wants to change his life because he is sad, you know? And he was just so happy. He's like, I don't have to do medication. I want this. And it just drives me to like want it for him too. So we're like, we're like experimenting, like this will be my, you know, amazing story of a client who got off of medication because I feel like exercise is medicine, you know? So I train everybody. (laughs) (laughs) No, I love that. Like even despite getting fit or doing it for the looks, when somebody Mm -hmm. get off their medication or, you know, like me, I always say I'm fighting to not have to get put on medication by yeah. diabetes, you know, either, or. I love that, like that, that touches me. Uh, thank yeah. you so much. It really touched me too when he said that. I was like, wow. Because when we first met, he was like, I get really sad when I shop for clothes. I have to go to the big and tall. And he's like, I buy shirts that are like tents. And this is five weeks later. He was like, my shirt is a little loose. I feel like I'm in a tent. And I was like, do you remember when we first met, you uh-huh. said that you were buying tents to fit and now your shirt's fitting like a tent. <laughs> like, so that was just like little things like that. And it's just, wow. It's more than just like looking good. He's feeling better. He's moving better. And that's like- He doesn't want to go back to that other way. He knows now yeah. he's starting yeah. to feel like, to, to feel great and to look great. That's really inspiring. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm inspired by him too. I was like, wow, I need to like dial in on whatever I need to dial in. <laughs> <laughs> it goes both really ways, cool. right? When you're working with right. clients. Yeah. yeah. That's so like true. us when we work with the seniors. I tell them all the time. They yep. inspire me. They come to class every single week. Oh my I, gosh. Several times a week. And I can't like older people are just amazing. I love training my older people because. I do learn about life. They, 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 they're experienced, they're wise, they tell me stories, but the drive that they have to just, you know, be strong and, and like, yes, they want to look good, but at the same time, they need to be able to pick stuff up. They need to be able to walk, to get off the ground without like all these things. So um, I really enjoy training older people. And it, it's funny because I, I'll talk to younger trainers who say, how do you train older people? I'm like, they're just people, <laughs> you know what I mean? That need help, you know? But I think people feel like they're older, so they're fragile and they are, but you treat them like people who need help. That's it, you know? And so um, it's interesting because I enjoy the older people. I feel like the younger kids, the younger people want to just look good and not really see the value of fitness or, you know, training is a luxury, right? They don't see the value of, you know, my 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 service they always want something cheap and fast and it's like this is an investment in yourself and I, I don't have that issue with my older clients they're like of course you're great I'm great true we're doing this <laughs> so I'm like, I get that even I, with DJ and like the I older the clients plan. they have the money yeah. they're ready to do you know they're established they they're, yes exactly you know yeah. and I might want them to change a little bit more of their habits but they take their time and that's okay like there's no rush for them you know what I mean Right. I think young people just want to look good now. And I'm like, those shortcuts don't last. Right. You know? And not put in all the work. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. They don't want to work. Yeah. My oh. seniors this morning and in, in the yoga class that I teach for my seniors, my oldest one in the uh, class now is 99. And she's just, I mean, wow. they all show up. They're ready to work. They're ready to meditate. So, they're ready to move their bodies. They're ready to stretch. They're ready to, um, cause I always say you guys showed up here for a reason, right? Mm-hmm. And they're all like, yeah, <laughs> sometimes people aren't even really sure. I think sometimes why they show up, but they know that they feel good when yeah. they leave the space mentally yeah. and physically. Even if they have, you know, limitations, we all have limitations and you work with it and you modify. And when you see people's mood literally change through the class to a really happy space, it's, it's very rewarding. I see that because like sometimes I'll have like busy days where I may have six or eight clients and it is different people. So the personalities are different, right? So I have to adjust my personality to every single person and like, 
right now with the pandemic and everything that's going on, like we're transitioning back to normal life, whatever that means, people come into the sessions stressed out, angry. And then I'm like, take a minute, breathe. This is your hour, you know? And then we start moving and then they're like, oh yeah, I had a great week. They just start, <laughs> I'm like, what happened to that? You know, you know, it's, it's great to see how movement shifts the mindset, shifts the attitude, gives you positive like endorphins. Um, and that's great because that's my job. Like I get to be a part of that. So the documentary that you spoke about, mm -hmm. I would love to see that. How can we? Yes. Okay. We... Uh, so it's funny because my husband made it for me for my birthday. Um, my show was in August of 2019. My birthday was in November and he just followed me for six weeks. He was so amazing because I would get up at five in the morning to go do cardio. By the time I got home by six, my breakfast was ready. He knew what I needed to eat. And he was a part of that journey, which I never had before. Because every journey, every show was like, I'm single, like, forget that relationship, you know, <laughs> kind of like woman power. But this one, I was happy. Like every show, I was just like trying to find that like fuel. And this one, I was so happy in my life. So he was a really great part of it. So he wanted to make a documentary and uh, it's really easy. It's called, Is It Worth It? Um, on YouTube. So it's uh, basically asking, is bodybuilding worth it? Like, because people say, is it really worth it? And like, I mean, it's expensive, it's exhausting, it's extreme, like all these things. And you have to see what my answer is on the documentary, but it takes a lot out of you. But the journey, your journey, what you learn from it, is that worth it to you? And I think, I mean, obviously I did it seven times, so you see why. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, um, it's a cute documentary. I love it. He uh, did a great job. It's very short, 30 minutes. And lately, there's been a lot of people watching it. So it's almost at 500,000 views. Wow. Um, I think every time there's a bodybuilding like show or season, people kind of look it up. Is it worth it? Bodybuilding because they want motivation, they want inspiration. So they're just looking up, you know, should I do this? And I tell people all the time, it's 30 minutes, go on the Stairmaster, watch it. And you should be inspired to maybe not do bodybuilding, but do whatever it is that you want. Whether it's like, you want to lose that weight, you want to get stronger, you want those abs, you want, I don't know, whatever you want. Like this should be a story about saying, I want to do this. I'm doing it with all my passion, all of my discipline, all self-love. And at the end, you see, like, I don't win nationals, but how did I take that loss? And then you can see how I, I took it. But it, it, I, I love it. And I'm so happy he captured it because I can show this to my, my kids one day, my grandkids. You know, it's like, wow. And it's very short. And um, it's called, Is It Worth It? And then everyone's like, is there a worth it part two? I'm like, not yet. <laughs> Who knows? Like, I'll be like, I don't know, 45 and maybe with one kid. And I'm like, I'm like, I want to do a show. And then I'll be like, is it worth it part two? Who knows? But <laughs> with the I kid. <laughs> yeah, with the kid. Really um, along, right? I have a lot of friends um, who compete that have kids and they, you know, get their one their bodies to be in the best shape. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe like, is it worth it part two? Me doing powerlifting, you know, like that could be something cool too, because it's still competing. It's still putting the discipline in the work, but just for something different, you know? Um, so I, I'm very competitive with myself and I just like being strong. And this would be like performance based, you know? I think bodybuilding is, they're different, but at the same time, you still need to put in the work. You still need to show up, you know, and keep consistent and work hard. Um, so maybe there'll be a part two. Can I ask you a quick question um, just about your food intake? I know it's for uh, bodybuilding. It's very extreme what you have to eat, but just, just what you're eating now, just as a, um, as you know, with your fitness uh, routine and, and what you do each day, like what can you give now. us? The, yes. Yeah. What are you doing now? Yes. So I'm, I'm working with a trainer now twice a week and I train on my own uh, three times. So like I work out five days a week. Um, and then like a lot of times I'll walk the rest of the other days I'm, I'm resting. But right now I really, of course I would like to lose, you know, five, seven pounds that I gained during the pandemic, but I feel very healthy. 
right? I feel like I'm not depriving myself. I'm not, you know, I eat 80% healthy, 20%, you can call it dirty or just, you know, Friday night pizza sounds great to me. Like I've never had that before because I was always prepping for shows. And now that I'm married, he loves pizza. So I'm like, it's so much better with a person like to eat pizza with, you know? Um, So yes, we'll have pizza on Fridays, but I get my meals. um, I usually cook, but now I work with a meal company that's called uh, Made Meals. All their foods are organic, locally owned, and the quality is just amazing. So I get a discount with them. So I just order it and I have it food ready for me. And like, that's the green juice that I order every day. I drink that first thing in the morning, but my, my lunch, dinner, and maybe a meal in between are already prepped, right? I buy it in bulk and it's all clean, healthy, clean things like salmon, rice, potatoes, broccoli, chicken. Um, And then my breakfast, I make it myself. And before when I was prepping, I would never like dare to eat a bagel. You know what I mean? Because it's like, you don't need it right now. But now I can have an English muffin, eggs, turkey, bacon, avocado, mustard, like that could be a breakfast sandwich. And I feel fine with it. I feel delicious. I have energy for my my workout that I'm trying to get strong. So I'm 80% healthy, 20%. Like if I want ice cream, I'll have it. I won't binge. Like I don't have, I feel like I've worked on my relationship with food for the past couple of years after these shows that I don't deprive myself of those things. But I think once I pick a show for competing, um, for powerlifting, I'll dial in on the nutrition if I need to, but I'm really enjoying life and it feels good because I'm eating to fuel my body, to perform, to live, to move. Um, and I'm not depriving myself of food because with bodybuilding, it was really strict because you had a goal, right? You had to eat these meals. You had to measure everything out. You can't eat outside of it, like processed food. I don't eat processed food now, but like if I had a bite of chips, I wouldn't feel guilty about it. You know what I mean? Um, and I don't go, I don't buy those things either because I don't have them in the house. But if we go out and I'm like, okay, slice of pizza sounds good. We'll have the pizza. And then I'm, I'm, I don't feel guilty, you know, because I'm eating healthy throughout the week where one meal is not going to set me back. So that's what I'm doing right now. It's like really just enjoying life, but also being mindful because I do enjoy eating healthy food. Salads make me feel good. Uh, vegetables, lean proteins. Like, I mean, I love those things. I enjoy it. I enjoy, you know, snacking on cucumbers, like things like that. I enjoy um, like, I'm, I mean, when I say the dirtiest meal I eat is pizza, it's not, it's not bad. I have it maybe once a month or twice a month at that. Um, but everything else is like healthy meals. I make sure I have my carbs, my proteins, my fats and vegetables. It's a balanced meal. So that's what I'm doing now. I, I make sure I get my water in. I try to get a gallon a day, um, sleep. I try to focus on that, you know, might be six, but try to get for seven to eight a night. Um, and just try to live my healthiest life in, in the most physical and mental way, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Like I'm not on a strict diet, but yes, I eat healthy. I enjoy it. I see it in my skin. I see it in my attitude and my energy. So I'm not going to eat pizza seven days a week. I'm going to eat healthy, you know, but if I want pizza, I can have it and be guilt free. So that's where I'm at right now. And then until we pick a show or a competition for powerlifting, I don't think I need to even cut down on food because like you need food to pick up heavy weights. Lift. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so that's going to be different. I, I don't need to be aesthetically pleasing for competition. I need to be strong. So I need to eat, you know? Um, so that's, that's where I'm at right now. And I enjoy doing cardio, but like maybe make it fun, like jump rope or um, box jumps. It's not like an hour cardio where I'm used to for bodybuilding. It's like, I don't need to do that. So that's where I'm at now. It's like, I like training five days a week. I like taking two days off. Um, I do yoga on Sundays with my girlfriend to support her business because she's a yogi. So I, I see her every Sunday. Um, and I also get massages. I like, I like to care of my body in that way. So I'm very, I guess, healthy and happy in that sense. Awesome. Can you tell us the name of um, that company again that you get your organic meals? Yeah, it's called Made Meals. Made, M-A-D-E? Made uh-huh. Meals. Meals, yeah. And I think you can get 20% off your first two orders with the code CHANTA, C-H-A-N-T-H-A. Okay. So you can try it out and see. Um, they do bulk orders. They do individual meals. And what I like about it, it tells you if you 
follow your macros or not, but it tells you exactly how many calories, how many grams of carbs, fats, and protein. Um, and if it comes with a the sauce, they'll say, this is how much it is with the sauce. This is how much it is without the sauce. But you literally see all the ingredients that's in the meal. And you can just taste the quality of the chicken, the vegetable. Because, you know, sometimes when you prep, it like doesn't taste good. Like, you know, <laughs> but they have an expiration date. But I say, would say like, just try out, like maybe you have your lunches prepped. You know, I, I have my meals prepped, but like I, I make my own breakfast, sometimes make my own dinners. But in between meals, if I'm working and I don't have time, I just grab a healthy meal. So there's no, I'm setting myself up for success in that way by having those meals ready. Um, so, I mean, and I enjoy the, the meal. So it's not, it's not like, oh my God, I'm starving from this. It's like, no, I had like, four ounces of salmon a cup of broccoli maybe a cup of rice and they have like a sauce if you want to put on there but i, I enjoy plain food because i've eaten plain food for, for so long but salt and pepper mustard hot sauce those are like perfect for me i don't need a lot of you know pajazz on the, on the food but it does taste really delicious hot sauce makes everything oh, she good. loves hot sauce to yeah. right? hot sauce queen it makes it Oh my God, on everything. You can put it on eggs, pizza, everything. It tastes delicious. Puts it on ice cream and her smoothies. <laughs> <laughs> you know you would. You know you would. Maybe in my well, I have to admit, I have put it on an apple. That you might did put strange. it in a smoothie I one. I put it on an apple. I'll have to try yeah. that. On an apple? Yeah. Yeah, I have to try that. Because my, my husband, I just started eating mustard because he loves mustard. But he would put it on like eggs and pizza. I'm like, that's gross. And then I would try. I'm like, actually, that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> so you like just never know. Yeah, it's true. Until you, until you try it. So yeah. where can where can people um, if they want to find you on social media? So can you tell mm -hmm. us your your so Instagram and your my um, yeah my Instagram is Shantz Boom Boom. So C H A N T S boom, boom. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's like my personal page, but also my business page. I put everything on there. That's fitness, positivity, and mindset. So you get a little bit of everything on there. Um, on social media, boom, boom, NYC is my clothing brand. Uh, it's just a collection of the sweat outfits, the hoodies and the joggers. Um, and then I do have a website. It's called, it's just seansboomboom.com. So you can also email me there. Um, you can DM me. I'm, I'm not that busy. I always get back to people. Uh, and then the documentary is on YouTube. It's called, Is It Worth It? And uh, it's, it's, really, it's really great. So those are all those things um, you can reach out. And uh, yeah, that's, that's me. So thank okay. you so much for, for- Oh my God, thank you guys so guest. much for you know, choosing me to be on this podcast. I, I love- you know, it's so funny because the more you forget, like sometimes when you have to tell your story to someone new, they're excited to hear it. My husband heard it so many times, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you're just like, wow, I'm really passionate about what I do. I love what I do. I've come so far and it just really feels good because now you're inspired to do even more, you know? So I, I really do appreciate both of you and thank you for allowing me to share my story with the world. Like I said, I knew your vibes years ago at Tribeca Fitness. I knew, you know, even yeah. you never got a chance, as we mentioned before, to, to yeah. talk until like really now yeah. um, or during COVID. Um, so you can spot the energy. You can feel the energy. Yes. I always, say, open. Um, I always say vibes don't lie. That's uh, true. Like mm -hmm. if you feel something, you're like, mm, something's off there. But yeah. I think you know, and also when you try to live your best life, you're always trying to grow. You're always trying to be a better person. You help people out. You have gratitude. That aura, that energy just kind of glows with you. Right. And people are just like, what's up with her? Like, what is she? And you're just like, I'm just working out, living my best life. I'm doing what I want. I'm saying no to things that don't align with my values. You know, those things, everybody's trying to work on. Everybody wants to be better, you know? And so when you see someone like kind of vibrating a little bit, you're like, she's working on herself for sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, That's how I feel. You know? and yeah. it's like you're like too blessed to be stressed. I say that all the time. Yeah, it's true. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. So thank you so much, Shanta. Oh, you're very welcome. Um, thank you. Yeah. I know I'll, we'll, we'll see you. We'll see you soon. Yes. <laughs>
Thank you again so much. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. You, you are very inspiring. So as we always like to say, we're like, we like to inspire and we like to be inspired. Same. So, Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So that's so what thank you so much. The world needs people like us. Very, more. <laughs> more yeah, people. Yeah. More people like us. Absolutely. That's it. That's it. All okay. right. Have a great night and we'll be in touch with you very soon. Perfect. Thank you so much. It was so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Bye.